Hey guys, Jason with Fat Fender Garage, and I am dressed up really nice today. Actually, not really nice, but I had a meeting early this morning, and so I would much rather be in a t-shirt. But anyway, so we're gonna do a little shop talk, but uh, we're gonna do it Fat Fender Garage, Jason style. And so we're just gonna do some build updates and talk about them and, and the things we know. So um, this is a pretty cool truck right here. It belongs to a friend of ours, uh, his name's Zeke. And uh, he sent this truck down here, all original paint. Honestly, I feel like this was restored our best guess once upon a time was in Mexico. We found like uh, just enough documentation that I think maybe somebody had built it down there, um, did a pretty good job on it actually, and um, been cruising it for a while. Um, and I could be totally wrong, who knows, but that's what it seemed like. And so we got it back here, basically at the point where I think we're about ready to uh, fire this up. Just waiting for a couple things to show up. This is sitting on a brand new chassis, uh, one of uh, the collaborations that we have with Porterbilt. And so we've got a brand new Porterbilt chassis underneath here. Uh, we've powder coated, put it all together, and we're basically plumbed, 85% uh, wired up. Um, just waiting for um, some wheels that we actually did get some wheels. We're gonna do just a, a basic off the shelf wheel, uh, a cast wheel that we found. Um, we got from Wheel Pros, uh, like a, a torque thrust looking uh, wheel. And uh, really from there, um, we're gonna get uh, we're gonna get moving on this thing. So uh, we've got our radiator in it. We've got the Gen 3 10 speed automatic, our brake booster kit, which we sell. You can kind of take a look at that. Um, this truck had a, actually red inner fenders. It had a red core support, and honestly, we just kind of went back to just a little bit more of a traditional look. So we went back to the black inner fenders and a black core support. I think it was too much red. We did clean up the firewall, got it all painted, so it looks cleaner. When you pop the hood, it's gonna look really nice in here. Anyway, it's pretty cool. Um, we've got the condenser. Uh, these are our brackets that we sell, part of our condenser kit. And if you can see how they're designed, it's really just to keep this about a quarter of an inch off your radiator. What happens is when the air is flowing through and it's going through the condenser, you want it to continue through the radiator. If you have a big giant gap right here, then what's gonna happen is it could potentially hit the condenser and then come out the sides and then you don't get enough cool air through your radiator and you're gonna run a little bit hotter. So that's why our radiator and our brackets and all that stuff actually works really good as a kit because it puts everything where you actually want it to be. And uh, you're not sitting there trying to figure out how to design brackets and put it all together. Uh, we've hardlined this right here. These are fittings that we use here. Um, and uh, we've got just a tiny little dryer with the trinary switch. So anyways, we like to hard line it on this side. It's a little bit tighter, cleaner, less likely to leak. That's Jake. All right, less likely to leak and uh, we'll carry on. We've actually got a lot of chassis we got to get done. So this is one that Brett's been working on. We've got uh, this chassis that's uh, being assembled here. And there's another chassis over there being assembled. There's like four or five of them going together right now. Um, we got a little bit behind uh, being at the F100 show, and so we're uh, uh, trying to get caught back up and get some stuff done and kicked out of here. So hopefully in the next couple of weeks, we'll have about five more chassis out of the shop. So um, these things really are dynamite. I actually, I actually love them so much. Uh, Portabilt does such a good job uh, being able to have a shop like them that we can collaborate with, we can talk to, we can make adjustments on the fly. So this is a, a Watts link back here. We're kind of uh, <coughs> updating and moving and adjusting. So everything we do is all Watts link related. They've got these really super cool billet um, links right here that uh, you just sit there. You can put a, a wrench on here if you want. You can turn it, adjust it, and get everything nice and centered. But it really holds a, the rear end right where it needs to be. Once upon a time, I actually said, uh, it's just like uh, a Pan Harbor and a Watts Link, they're kind of the same thing, and boy, Nate with Portable gave me a hard time, so uh, I won't make that mistake. Anyways, but uh, uh, Watts Link is pretty much everything we're using. We're using Curry uh, housings, um, and then we also use the fabricated housing as well. So we use them both, it just depends on the application. And really it just depends on uh, a lot to do with um, the look you're after as well. Some people like that more rigid chiseled look. I'll, I'll see if I can find one here that is in a chassis. A lot of the chassis, when we put them together, um, there's a lot that we do to try to help you guys figure out what kind of chassis you want. So 
um, if you're interested in you know, high horsepower numbers, then we're definitely going to want to make sure we upgrade the rear end to have uh, bigger yokes, uh, have bigger splines. Uh, the third member, everything is designed to handle it. We um, always do like a true track uh, posi system in the back. Um, but we have, have it all come from Curry, everything's set up from Curry. It's all brand new, it's ready to go. Uh, everything's set up, uh, you can put uh, rear sway bars on everything, and that way uh, uh, you can really have a nice firm ride in the corners especially. So, um, one of the things I recall, um, one of the first chassis I ever bought, uh, honestly, it was a TCI chassis. And I was super excited to use it. And we got this in, it was a for a 53, 56 Ford. And when we got it all in, um, we got it uh, here at the shop, we start putting together, and it was just super nice to have a chassis that was already just done for us. But through the course of the build and when we finished, a couple of things that I learned is that there's a lot of questions to buying a chassis that I felt like I had not been asked. And so I just was like, dang it, I wish someone would have asked me all this information. So like for instance, what size uh, wheels and tires do I want to run on the back? And am I going to put mini tubs? Am I going to widen the fender? What am I going to do? So like all that information and the, the look, do I want a deep dish in the back? Like what is it I'm after? And so uh, for me, as I work with you guys on purchasing chassis, I ask you all that uh, information. I want to know exactly what it is you're wanting to accomplish, what the ride quality is like, what you plan to do with this thing so that we actually can custom tailor this chassis to be exactly what it should be. And you're not making provisions later on down the road, like, well, I didn't know, so I guess let's just get these wheels, right? So um, oftentimes uh, when you're, you know, if you have like a 67 to 79 Ford um, and you want to use just as wide a wheel as you can get and you actually want to use off the shelf wheels, oftentimes that's going to result in a wider axle than stock because we need to be able to find the center of that wheel and we need to reach it by centering up uh, a big you know 10 inch wheel in the actual fender uh, tub so there's a lot that goes into it i'm super obsessed and ocd with a lot of the details so as we walk around and look at some of these chassis you'll be you'll be able to tell the difference uh, you know, with uh, Fat Fender Garage and a lot of the other companies that uh, you're purchasing stuff from. So, there are not a lot of companies, hardly any, I would say, that actually sell a chassis, put it all together, and make sure it's on point for you. So, we'll go take a look at some chassis over here, kind of explain what I mean. Uh, Pierce and uh, Brett are putting some stuff together here. Um, this is a 5356. We sell this in a couple different ride heights. So, you got a level one, level two, level three. Level two and three are the same. Uh, one's coilover and one's bagged. Level three will get you all the way down on the ground. Uh, this is a level two coilover. And uh, they've purchased it powder coated. And uh, Pierce is getting everything ready to go. Uh, he's got a proportioning valve here uh, just to help with the back brakes. This essentially um, is only adjusting the back brakes. We always put as much pressure to the front as the master cylinder will allow. And then we adjust the back just so we're not locking up. And uh, from here, because it is riding low, they'll put in a residual valve, a two pound residual valve, just to make sure that it's holding the fluid uh, and the calipers always are ready to go. This is a tank that uh, Boyd has designed for us. If you're building a four truck um, and you're doing a Coyote motor, this is the tank we like to use. You actually use, uh, we're changing over to the Ford Mustang GT pump. And so uh, pretty straightforward, it's pretty simple. Um, You'll put, uh, especially if you have like a wrecked Mustang you've bought everything from, uh, you can just use the pump, but it's a pump you can actually get uh, from, from any store. Uh, O'Reilly's, Napa, you can just get that pump. Any Ford dealership will have this pump. Uh, we'll do a video segment on why we do this and try to help explain it. But if you take a look at this tank, um, you would normally have right here a uh, sending unit. And that sending unit would be going up to your gauges. And it doesn't exist because the sending unit is actually built into the pump. And so the wiring harness and pigtail that we actually offer, we're using the Ford OEM stuff. So the sending unit, the, the pump and everything's all built in the pigtail. You wire it all up and uh, you're ready to go up with your gauges. So it's just a better way to do it. It's how the new manufacturers do it. Um, we don't have to mess with the, uh, 
the sending units being out of calibration or breaking or falling apart, uh, getting a hole in the float or any of that stuff, it's just a better way to do it. So again, uh, the process is really just trying to think of the very, very best way, not cut corners to save money, because that always bites us in the fanny later, but the very best way that we can possibly make these. So Pierce is uh, working hard. Uh, Pierce does an amazing job on uh, brake lines, fuel lines. Our buddy Casey, Casey's paint shop, uh, he actually wanted to hire Pierce and uh, offer him a job in Texas, but uh, Pierce knows we'll take care of him here. Right, Pierce? Yep. Yep. Plus, he wants to live in Texas and go to work for KC, right? So this is getting uh, real close to a completed chassis. You can see the exhaust system is done on it. Um, all three inch exhaust. You can see a supercharger that uh, is on this one. And so the one we like to use is the Whipple supercharger. And it's on a Gen 3 Coyote. Now this is gonna be pretty awesome because look, you got a five speed. This guy's gonna just go uh, beat the heck out of this thing and have a really, really good time in it. So, uh, but all three inch mandrel bent, stainless steel exhaust. We got a resonator tucked up in there. It's really tight, but it's in there. Uh, dual Borla exhaust. And then of course we got the fuel tank. The fuel tank, uh, again, is using a four GT pump. But this time, instead of just a regular GT, we're actually using the GT500 pump. So the same pump goes in there, you just swap it out really easy. You don't have to buy anything different. It's got dual pumps, it's ready to go. It's the same pump that the GT500 uses, so you're gonna be, you're gonna be in good shape. This is the chassis right here. Um, we're working on uh, exhaust system on it. Again, it's another three inch exhaust. You take a look at it. Uh, we've got some flex right here. He's tacking it all in. Everything's V-band uh, bolted together so you can get it apart. You got the resonator, you got an X-pipe, and he's getting it all finished up. So he'll probably be done with this today. Uh, if not tomorrow, weld it all up. This is, uh, this is Jason's little, uh, Jason, he's a welder, another Jason, right? One time we had three Jasons and it got real confusing. It was like new Jason, old Jason, uh, OG Jason, it was just kind of a fright. Uh, so he also helps us with the headers. We got a couple guys here that do headers. They do a super good job and uh, are cranking these out. They can knock out a set of headers and at both sides like a day and a half, fully welded, ready to go. Here's this, this Bronco. Um, it's a 1972 Bronco. He wanted us to do some work on it about a year and a half ago. So he brought it up, dropped it off. And then he said, I just want to do a coyote swap. I may have mentioned this before and do the interior. And we, we are so far from that. It's unbelievable. This thing is going to be insane when it's all done. Uh, it's got Dana 80 axles. He's got a heavy duty built uh, hero uh, transfer case. I mean, this is essentially, is like king of the hammer stuff. Like you could just take this thing just about anywhere. We got 40 inch uh, tires on it. Uh, I mean, it's ready to go. And we're gonna put a super cool stereo system in it. Really nice interior, electric Mustang seats. Uh, so we're just wrapping up a couple things. Next week, we're gonna roll this, uh, Monday, we're gonna roll this in the body shop. And we're just gonna, a light refresh on the paint. And I think the chassis is the chassis, it's off to yeah, powder, coat. Pow powder coat. So the chassis, we're getting it blasted, um, get it cleaned up. I think we're going to bring it back, right? Yeah, bring it back, just fix any imperfections. Yeah. Um, weld a couple little things up, but other than that. So we'll get the chassis back and we're going to weld it all up, make sure it's all good. But we want to strip it, make sure it's nice and clean. Uh, here's the motor. You take a look at that. Look at this. This is not cheap stuff here. This is the real McCoy. He wants everything. He wants cup holders. I mean, the guy's like, I gotta have it all. So, anyway, so we're we're working all that. All that. Um, it'll be a traditional uh, Bronco, which means all this will be cleaned up and and we'll re-bedline everything, bedline underneath it, and do a bedliner inside. So it's nice and clean and and uh, a little bit more useful for being off-roading and getting some water on it, which. 
If I had to guess, this thing will never see water. But anyway, it'll be protected. We'll go talk about this truck here. So if you take a look here, these are all uh, have been Cerakoted. And I want to say, I don't remember the color. Now I can't remember. Anyways, but we picked, uh, we picked a color. I don't know if it's like transfer gray or what it was, but um, it's a Cerakote color. It's an air dry. So what we did is we actually uh, blasted all this in the blaster, uh, cleaned it all with uh, acetone, let it sit, and then we put it in the booth and then we shot it all. And it takes about five days to fully cure, um, but uh, it's been a couple days, so it's dry. It just needs a fully cure. And then this is gonna go on the 49. We're just putting the 49 together, and it's all been together, but we're just kind of like, now it's to, gonna be together for good, right? So uh, we've got uh, kind of uh, an electric master cylinder. There's an electric pump to help create vacuum. Uh, this puts out, oh, shoot, like 12, 1300 PSI to the calipers. It actually puts out a lot. Anyways, this is uh, gonna be here. This is our clutch um, master, and so it'll go down, um, and they'll, they'll get all the brakes and fuel and everything connected up here shortly. Um, but this is uh, gravity fed, and then it forces it back up in here, and then you go out to the two brakes. So it works really good in tight situations, and this is a tight situation right here. Um, just no room to put a booster or, or anything. And since this guy's actually gonna tow with a trailer, uh, manual brakes just didn't feel like the wise thing to do. So we, yeah. <laughs> if it's just a half ton and it's nothing, but if you're pulling something, man, I mean, just because it's 1949 doesn't mean you need 1949 brakes, yeah. right? So, um, so we're gonna go this route. And I think he'll be in good shape. So um, they're, they're getting all this put together. Um, you can take a look in here. We've got the Dakota digital gauges. We've got a Willwich, Willwood clutch pedal assembly. We've got a Flaming River steering column. And then we're using the Restomod AC system. And we've 3D printed some parts here that we'll put vents in here just to kind of, we don't want to mess up the dash or anything, keep it simple. And then we'll have uh, vents in here, the little center section. We've actually got a charge port and then the trailer trailer brake control that he'll be able to uh, use this right here. So it'll all be right there for him to adjust. And so uh, we've got the Restomod membrane material uh, installed on the back wall and on the firewall just so we can get that up in there so that we're, as we put things together, it's already in. These are uh, Mustang seat brackets that we built. Um, he's actually running the electric Mustang seats in here. And this guy's not really tall, but still it doesn't matter these are small cabs like i don't care who you are yeah and so there's just tiny and so the the original floor would have come to about right here and up so we actually extended it and brought it up just to get a little bit more clearance if you kind of look the difference between that and that over there just just to make it as comfortable as we can if he has to scoot up that's fine yeah. but the reality is is you can't go back so um Looks like uh, Jake here is making some lines and running the uh, fuel line. Is that what you're working yeah, on then? The the so we'll get that in there. Um, one thing we want to make sure is that make sure there's support on here. Yeah. Otherwise, yeah, this is just plastic. It's it's a plastic, plastic, it'll break off. And there's a lot of fittings there. So just make sure we get that supported real good. Okay. A couple more things, and that'll be it this time. Um, I actually got to get back to work. Yes, I do work. I work hard, long days. Cody here, he's been doing just a bang up job on, on this truck. Um, he's got some doors that he's built here, super cool. He's got a uh, little magnetic touch latch that we'll be able to uh, control with it. We'll have some hinges that uh, he designed that we're making. And so we'll be able to access stuff here and yet still have it kind of close up and kind of go away. Keep it simple, right? And so, yeah, check it out. So he's working on that right there. We got the latches set. We're just waiting for the hinges, the final, yep. final hinges to come in, but all the latches, everything is working. What happens is when you're doing this kind of stuff, it's easy to just do like big stuff and knock it out and it looks good fast, right? Yep. This stuff, this little tiny stuff, it just takes a lot of time getting it dialed in. And if you don't take the time and put it in it, you freaking hate it later. Yeah. You just hate it later, yeah, right? The fine, the fine tuning So you might as well just do it right now. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. 100%. So this is our uh, hood latch. 
And uh, we actually have a, we can show you the little striker. So this is gonna get mounted on the hood. Yep, and that's gonna go down there and hold that. So that'd be a nice, simple way. Uh, keep it, again, keep it simple. Yeah. Um, and then uh, it's just basically a, a, like a door lock actuator. Yeah, bear, yeah, bear claw style it's like a, it's a bear claw style latch, uh, but it also is electric and it has an actuator built into it. Yeah. So it actually has some cool features for yeah. it. Working really hard on it. Cody shaved the upper cowl right here. Um, we could have left it open, but it just wouldn't have complemented when the hood is up. It just wouldn't have looked as nice. Uh, this right here, believe it or not, this is how you're gonna put brake fluid. <laughs> if you had to, right here. Yeah. There is no, there is no master cylinder or brake booster or anything. This engine compartment is gonna be clean. It's all tucked up under the dash. We've had to modify a bunch of different things and uh, work really hard to figure out how to get it to, to work. It's not something you can buy off the shelf and just have it happen. Yeah. This is a guy that uh, lives in Texas. His name's Paul. He has like a Instagram, like 3T Garage or something like that. I can't remember everybody's Instagram handle, but I'm pretty sure that's what it is. I'm sorry, Paul, if I got it wrong. Anyways, um, but he's also got a super sick uh, le uh, level seven pickup truck that they race. And God, I think he's cleaning up. I think he's just fastest truck in the nation. So very cool. Um, he, Paul likes cool stuff. And, uh, and when he does something, he never does it just good enough. It's always the very best. So. Uh, if he's going to build a race truck, he's going to win it all. So anyways, um, so here we are working on the bed, dialing in a few things, the tubs, um, just working on the tailgate, uh, getting that uh, working. I think they've got uh, uh, Rad Fab had actually put in a tailgate mechanism in there like off the newer Chevy trucks. And so uh, trying to get all that to work, uh, get some clearances for the tailgate. This is a truck we're wrapping up here. It's about ready to go to the body shop. It's a 6772 F100. Um, they're just, they got a few little pieces just ready to go in, but they're just wrapping up. We'll actually have a little door here as well. And then we'll have uh, some charge ports and whatnot here. Um, let's, go look, let's go look underneath the hood real quick. So we're in the middle of uh, putting some inner fenders right here uh, because everything's been uh, lowered. We needed a little more clearance. And so we kind of got rid of these. Um, and then we're uh, just, just trying to get everything dialed in the very best we can. So uh, again, this is really close to being ready to go to the paint shop. Essentially, we get these done and make sure our hood is good. And I think we're about ready. I said, finish up a little in the back. So I'm, I'm guessing one to two weeks, this will be in the paint shop. and. Then we can start uh, going through it. I had a lot of rust, unfortunately. It was a pretty nice truck. Everywhere we turned, there was just a little bit of rust everywhere. Here, the corners, inside, outside. Here, over there, like the, I mean, it was just, like little spots like this just everywhere on the truck. And it, um, it just made it really sad because it just took a lot of effort and work that none of us wanted to put into it, so. All right, uh, let's go back to the body shop. It's nice back here. We got this curtain and there's a swamp cooler dedicated. And I would say it's about five to 10 degrees cooler back here sure. easily than anywhere else in the shop. Yeah. So these guys got a hard job, but at least they get the most cool air. So they are prepping, cutting, getting ready to buff. Um, Luis, how's it looking? Pretty good. You like your new little gadget? Amazing game changer. A little posture. So he turns that on. So this is a variable speed here, which can make this variable speed here. So he can go fast, slow, and getting into these little corners. Yeah, oh man, that's nice. That is nice. Mm, that's game changer right there. Luis came, comes to me a week ago and he's like, hey, actually he doesn't even come to me. I get an email, I get an email and I pop it up, I'm looking at it and then in walks Luis and I know exactly what he wants. So uh, actually it wasn't that bad, pretty uh, reasonably priced. They can buy it off of Amazon. On Amazon? Yeah, it's Max Shine. Max Shine? 
little mini. Okay. okay. There's a there's several companies yeah, there's out several there. Companies. There's Maxshine. There's uh, I think Adams. There's several companies that make it. Uh, you just pick the one you want. Uh, I would say it's Meguiar's, but they don't make one. <laughs> we love Meguiar's. Unfortunately, sometimes we have to just make one for us, right? Um, but everything we use here, as far as polishing and everything, is either 3M or Meguiar's. We got the 110, the 210, the 100 compounds that we use. Even all the sandpaper we're using, wet sand, is all Meguiar's and 3M. So. Um, honestly, it's just when you're working on stuff and it has to be the best, you got to buy the best, right? Oh. You got the whole bedside today. Whoo! Look at that thing. Yeah, that's nice. Look at that thing. So got it all buffed. A little dusty, but, a little dusty, but man, it's flat. that thing is beautiful. Always brand new microfibers, everything's clean. If it hits the ground, it's toast. Oh, it's yeah. gone, we can't use it anymore. Some people like to know what we use. Good stuff right there. The buffing's the easy part, right? The easy part, that go part is fast. Luis is like, no, nothing's easy back here. <laughs> uh, this is the cab here. Um, we're gonna paint the inside of it. It's not going to be blue. It's going to be a different color. And that's a color we're not going to show for a little while. So there's some details on this truck that we're actually going to keep back just for a little bit. We've got a few surprises. And so we're going to surprise you with the color of the inside of it. It's not what is going to be expected. Um, and this might be the most radical thing I think we've ever done here at our shops. I am a very safe builder. Safe, safe, safe. Uh, I like things to just work. Um, I'm not. So, someone that's just gonna go super wild and crazy with crazy colors. Uh, but this one, um, the blue's so good, and then we thought, well, maybe we could do something different on the interior, which has kind of influenced the rest of the interior of the, of the truck and what we're gonna use for leather. So anyways, probably in about another month, we'll let you see what it looks like on the inside. We've got some product here that uh, is the, the side molding that goes actually on that truck, the blue truck we're just looking at. So they're prepping this, getting it ready, and uh, we'll be doing a Cerakote finish on this, plus a bunch of other parts that are gonna get Cerakote finish. Uh, we used to powder coat more, and it was just hard. It was hard to get like everything, door handles and mirrors and bumpers and everything. It's like very difficult for us to actually get all the colors to be the same if I'm using powder coat, and then I'm using Cerakote, and then I'm using paint. And so what we learned is, hey, we can Cerakote everything. And so that's what we're doing. Let's go take a look inside. All right, so this is ready to be buffed. They're gonna just stop there and they're going to paint the inside of the cab. Boy, it's much quieter in here. And, um, and they'll be ready to go. So uh, they'll paint this up here. So it's actually really not that much to paint. And then we'll actually black out everything else clean, clean up all the, uh, the bare metal, clean it all up, and uh, uh, we probably put a little SEM rust uh, inhibitor on it just to kill it, and then we'll clean it all off, and then we'll just black all this out. And then we'll use the Restomod uh, membrane material, which we've, we've already shown you in the video, and then we'll actually put all that stuff in here. A lot of times on the firewall, they actually have a thicker material, Membrane Max. So there really isn't anything uh, on the market just like that, and so um, those guys are really just like pushing forward and coming out with cool stuff and uh, works well for us. So paint this and move forward. Do you guys see the big radio? It's a Kenwood 10 inch, so it's gonna be awesome. I think that is a wrap. We're gonna wrap it up in here um, at, at, uh, in the paint booth. And so um, it's looking like it's gotten kind of dirty with all the painting of this. And so they'll be uh, next tearing this booth down, clean it up put new floors down, new filters, start cleaning the walls off and get it ready for the next vehicle. So every vehicle that we, um, we get to the paint stage, once we get to the paint stage, it actually gets cleaned up and everything. And so um, paint booths are just messy in general. Um, wish we could afford a big, nice downdraft booth, but you get what you get sometimes. So uh, thanks for following us uh, along the Fat Printer Garage journey and everything that we're doing here. There's a lot of cool stuff. We didn't see everything. So if you're like, oh, I hope they show my truck that's here. I'm sorry, we'll try to catch it next time. 
But uh, we've got a lot of cool stuff and uh, we don't want to make this any longer, but at the same time, hopefully you've seen some cool stuff here and you want to keep following us along. But make sure you subscribe because we're always got videos coming out. There's always updates, there's always some cool stuff. There's sometimes tech stuff. We've got a ton of new product coming out. Like the guys in the R&D department have just been marching forward with a bunch of new stuff. So I would suspect uh, in the next couple weeks you're going to start seeing probably some new products almost uh, one a week for a little while. Make sure you follow along, subscribe, uh, hit that little bell shaped thing and then you'll know if we're actually posting something. Um, and then share, share our stuff. That's actually helpful for us. If you can share our stuff and uh, share it around on your social media platforms, that actually helps us and we really appreciate it when you do that. And so um, we're looking forward to uh, hearing your comments and we're looking forward to uh, showing you more stuff in the future. But again, thank you from the bottom of our heart for uh, following us and letting us be a part of your lives and doing what we love to do, and that is build cool trucks. Thanks.